Welcome back everybody. I've been looking forward to making this video for you. In fact, I've been waiting about two weeks to do it. It was about that long ago that my item at Home Depot should have been in the store for pickup. However, I'm still waiting for that original order to continue processing. They said it would be ready a couple of weeks ago. Still waiting. So I went to another store and found it on the shelf and I went ahead and bought it. So today I'm going to share with you the Home Depot casket. <laughs> I'm not really sure what possessed me to put this in for in-store pickup instead of delivery like I did with everything else. I think it must have been the timing because it said um, it had specific dates on when I could pick it up or it should be available to pick up, but it just wasn't. So um, when I saw it in another store, I was in my little car here, and as you can probably guess, it didn't quite fit. This is a pretty big box. It's about yay big. Um, and it would not fit in my car, and it is super heavy. I wasn't expecting it to weigh quite as much as it does. But I managed to take everything out, stick it in my car, and now it's got to come out. Okay, I will tell you, it feels like a lot less taking it out of the car than trying to put it in the car while in the middle of the Home Depot parking lot while everybody is looking at me. But I do have everything out, so let me go ahead and put the car away, make some room, let's get this thing together. So it looks like there really aren't a whole lot of parts and pieces to this prop. In fact, the box says we should be able to assemble it in just 15 minutes. Before we go ahead and do that, let's take a closer look at the box itself. As you can see here, it is a six foot graven bones LED gold encrusted casket. It's for indoor and outdoor use and it has a timer function on the lights, six hours on, 18 hours off. There's a hinged top panel for opening and closing and a removable pillow. One thing to notice is that the first thing it says like in the instruction booklet and it's got little um, attached warnings here is to do not lie in the casket, do not sit or climb in the casket, which is very disappointing because you know that's the first thing I'm going to want to do once it's assembled, though it's probably a bit small for me. Um, I can see how other people might want to get right inside this. But let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions and see how we can put this thing together. We're going to start with the middle. So there are the two big pieces there that just represent the ends. Um, there is a center section that's going to hold them both together. And it looks like, even though it's got this gold encrusted handles and whatnot, they don't actually move. So that's a little bit disappointing. Um, but they have some tabs on the bottom sections and it looks like there's holes for the tabs to fit right in. So it is pretty simple, it looks like. We're just gonna snap it together. All right, I misspoke just a little bit. Those tabs don't snap together. Once you put them in place, the tabs actually rotate and that's what's gonna keep it locked in place. All right, also on the bottom side, there is some sort of clip mechanism. I imagine that's gonna go with the stand that we can add to it. And you can see it does have some tubes that will connect the pieces together with, it's just a standard locking tube mechanism. Each end of the casket is labeled A and B, and there's some stickers again that will show us which side goes on what. I'm just going to line up these pipes and push in a little locking pin until they're both in place. So that was pretty easy. And we're just gonna do the same thing with the other side. So the locking pins were only on the bottom half. The top half uses this attached tool, which honestly you could just use a screwdriver as well. Um, but we're going to use this to turn some locking pins on the upper half. In case you were wondering if we were done with the locking clips, no, we're not. There are apparently a couple here on the underside as well. These are um, 
some sort of levers with latches. So we're just going to latch them in place. There should be, looks like there's six of them. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over because it's going to be a little bit easier for me here. Um, we have the power cord, which is nice. It's got this on off button here, um, which again, as we saw from the box, is actually a timer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and unravel the cord. It looks pretty lengthy, but that's because we need to connect it here at one end of the casket. We're going to run it down through some wire holder clips to the other side of the casket and then across the casket. <laughs> and then there's a small notch in the back where that wire can then come through. So if you're laying it flat, your wire is not going to get smushed there. Next, we're going to place the pillow in here. I call that pillow loosely. It is just hard plastic. Um, it's got some nubs on the, bo the bottom that will just slide into the holes on the bottom of the casket and slide into place. It's time to put the lids on. I like how it's got that nice fancy skull on it. On the other side of the lid, it does have a couple of pieces of plastic here that are going to slide into the slots right on the casket. The thing I'm noticing though is it doesn't look like this moves. So if you want the entire casket lid to come up, I'm not sure you can do that, but um, maybe you can retrofit it to make it work. The upper half of the casket has the mobile tabs and it's also got a hydraulic mechanism. All right, I do have to go ahead and flip it around because it looks like the tabs are gonna go on that side, which confuses me a little bit because that cord that I thought was coming out of the back of the casket, which is where we would want it to come out so it's not you know, in your face, actually comes out the front. Um, oh well, let's turn it around. All right, as I said, this is not a light prop. It is not easy to maneuver around. Let's go ahead and put this in place. Um, as I was flipping it around, a couple of things I noticed. There is actually a slot on this side as well for the cord, so we don't have to worry about that. On the front, there is a tab here as well. So this side is the non-hinged side, right? And there is a slot here that, that will put, uh, it will go in. Same on this side, I didn't show you that, but it does make it look a little bit more finished. It's certainly coming together. Let's go ahead and open this back up. There are two more locking pins that come with this that are going to hold these tabs in place. They just screw on using this same tool that they gave us. The last thing that we need to do is take this hydraulic rod and snap it on the pin. All right, let's see what happens. It seems to work just fine. Again, we put that uh, front slot in the hole and there we go. Before we go ahead and plug it in, check and see what it looks like all lit up, let's go ahead and put the stand together because you might not want your casket laying down like this. It'll be a little hard for some of the trick-or-treaters to see the creepiness inside. Um, so you might want to stand it up. And to make that happen, We've got a few pieces here that we need to assemble. All right, the piece with the arms here is going to hold the casket. So we're gonna put that up at the top. Again, it's got locking pins, so it's very easy to just snap together. And then there is a long piece for the base. Again, just snap that together. And there we go. Let's see if it works. So it looks like at the bottom, there are two pins that hold it in place. And that's going to dictate how vertical the whole thing stands. If you have it in the rear pins, it stands up much more vertically. And then in the front pins, it's a little more relaxed. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in and see how it looks. All right, remember there is an on off switch. And there we go. So now, one thing I'm offhand just a little disappointed on is that there's only LEDs here in the front. Looks like there's six on this side, six on this side. Let me go ahead and bring the camera in and we'll take a closer look. All right, I may not have assembled this completely correctly because this does not line up. Might just be a little twisted, but that bothers me just slightly. 
but it does have this nice scroll work on it with the skeleton head at the top and at the bottom. So if it were closed and you were looking at it sideways, you'd be able to see it either way. On the sides, you've got the handles. Again, they don't work. And then the extra details on the end. Let's go ahead and open it back up. Inside the pillow and the lights. And you can't really do anything with the bottom. There is an access panel here that's going to hold your pose and stay skeleton in place. If you are going to leave the casket upright, you're going to want to make sure the backside is not very visible. It's not very attractive. So let's go ahead and put our skeleton in and see what it looks like without the stand. Okay, so the problem that we're seeing offhand is that he doesn't sit high enough um, to have his head on the pillow because he's only five foot tall and this is a six foot casket. So now I see why we really do need to use this clip to hold them in place. Let's see how easy this is to swap out. All right, you're just going to clip, pinch the clips, and there you go. I'm just gonna go ahead and swap out the clip here. It just snaps right into place, and let's see how it looks now. There we go, he's much better now with his head up on the pillow. You can barely see the clip. Um, but I guess what we really want to know is what is it going to look like when it's a little bit darker now? All right, here in the darkness, I think it lights up pretty well. The red LEDs cast a kind of an eerier glow on the skeleton than you wouldn't normally see. And I like that. At first I was a little concerned because the lights are very visible. But again, it's Halloween. Having fun lights on things actually makes it um, more fun and more like Halloween. Um, I did put the, the casket in the garage while we waited for it to get a little bit dark, and it is so heavy. That would be my main complaint. I have a little bit of difficulty maneuvering this thing around because it is big and hulking and bulky. Um, so, you know, if you are a little bit on the weaker side, this might not be the prop for you. Um, one thing that I think they could have done to really make this a little bit better was on the black stand here. If they had just added some wheels on the back so that you could just kind of tilt it back and roll it wherever you wanted to go, that would have made it perfect. But they didn't do that. We're just going to have to hulk it around everywhere. But that's really my only complaint with it. It does have enough detail that it, it makes for a very interesting looking prop. And uh, I think it, it looks vaguely realistic. But you're going to have to wait till we get closer to Halloween to see what it looks like in the display. Before we go today, though, I did want to say thank you to all of the patrons who help support the channel. If you are interested in joining our Fright Club, you can check out my link to the Patreon page in the description below. That'll do it for today, so thanks for watching, everyone. Till next time, take care, and happy haunting.